Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. This is episode four of five on health and fitness. We've talked a little bit about why it's hard to stay fit, what motivates some people, and, and now we're gonna talk about how much genetics play into our final athletic ability. A question a lot of us has asked is, why are some people better athletes? Is there something born into them that makes them just a better athlete? It's basically this old question, nature versus nurture. Nature being genetics, nurture being environment or how you're raised. And there are lots of different studies on heritability for traits relevant to a person's athletic ability. Things like aerobic capacity, response to training, anaerobic performance, muscle strength and power, neuromuscular coordination, bone density, muscle fiber type distributions, all sorts of different things. And a lot of that comes down to this battle of nature versus nurture. According to Dan Agen, Associate Professor of Molecular Genetics and Cell Biology at the University of Chicago, fetal programming, also called prenatal programming, is the idea that during development of the embryo and fetus, important physiological parameters can be reset by environmental events. And of most important, the resetting can endure into adulthood and even affect the following generation to produce a transgenerational non-genetic disorder. What Agen is talking about more or less is epigenetics. The idea that what I do in this life and how I uh, have my genetics affected by the stress of the life that I'm leading can affect my offspring and potentially even their offspring. Recent evidence shows that uh, fetal programming can affect athletic performance and epigenetics can as well. Three studies by a research group in the UK found that fetal programming also affects muscle quality, muscle performance, but there needs to be more studies to show whether this is a completely accurate measure and whether we could say anything of confidence about this. And we should absolutely say that this is just genetic predisposition. We're not saying that your fetal environment decides how fit you're going to be or can be, or even that your epigenetics can determine everything about you. That's just one tiny piece of this huge puzzle. Studies suggest that fetal programming's effects on the body may be mediated through energy balance and simple physical activity. So it might just mean that you have to exercise a little teeny bit differently than somebody with different fetal programming. What they do know is that nurture is is super important. So here's a point for nurture. It's unknown whether or not vigorous physical activity in childhood develops an elite athlete. Obviously, you can cultivate somebody who enjoys sports and athletics if you are a person who also enjoys those things or you know how to cultivate that behavior in your offspring and your child. You know, if you encourage them to participate in sports and you make it fun for them, then they may just grow up to be an athlete. Now, whether they're gonna be an elite athlete doesn't just have to do with your nurturing. You can only stage parent so much before you have to have the right child. This is where nature and nurture kind of meet in the middle. Gene environment correlation is what we would call in the real world, she's a natural. The first time somebody does something or after doing it for a very short period, they're just good at it or they really like it. And this could happen for a number of different reasons. And in this case, we're saying that there's probably a genetic predisposition, but there isn't always, even when this appears to happen. When an individual self-selects something like a sport or you know an activity of some kind, or they're urged to participate in it, they might show early aptitude and that means they have gene environment correlation. So it's kind of a label put on later, but it's great. And again, it's extremely difficult to know whether or not that will produce an elite athlete. Just because someone's a natural at an activity doesn't mean they're gonna be in the elite. For example, was Peyton Manning good at football because he had a genetic predisposition for throwing the football well and he was going to grow big and strong? Or did his dad push him and Eli into it? I mean, obviously he pushed Peyton a little harder, but you know, whatever, that's neither here nor there. But the self-selecting is very important. You know, chances are not only did Peyton Manning's dad push him into athletics, Peyton also liked it. He enjoyed playing this game because if you don't like the sport, it doesn't matter how great your genetics are. You can't force somebody into this. Which brings us back to that debate between nature and nurture. According to a 2008 article in Scientific American, there's a company in Colorado, Atlas Sports Genetics, that claims that they can screen people for variants of the gene ACTN3, which in elite level athletes is associated with the presence of a specific muscle protein, alpha-actinin-3. 
This protein helps muscles contract powerfully and at high speeds, which might explain why the combination of ACTN3 variants that produce it has been found in Olympic sprinters. That is super interesting. Kids who have two copies of the X variant from both parents don't make alpha actinin 3. They're better suited potentially for distance sports, for endurance sports, cross country skiing, running and swimming. Those with one copy of the X variant and one copy of another one, the R variant, will make some of this uh, protein, and they're better for power sports like soccer or cycling. And then children with two copies of the R variant and none of the X variant will make a lot more alpha actinin 3, and that's great for football, weightlifting, or sprinting. Again, this comes back to one company and their claim about this one gene, so you can take this as you will, but the answer to nature versus nurture is way more complicated than simple gene expression. I will tell you this right now. So there may be a specific gene that can predict a person's athletic performance, but remember, this is just one way to figure out what a child's strengths might be. There is something to be said for whether or not the child likes what they're doing, whether or not the family has the resources to put them into something, and whether or not they've tried all of the different sports. You could be the next Olympic figure skater, but if you never have put on skates, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> sometimes individuals are built a certain way, and sometimes they're raised in the right environment, sometimes both, sometimes only one of those things. So let's look at one specific example of an individual being genetically gifted for their sport. According to Richard Wiener, a former All-American swimmer, who also practiced sports medicine at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, all things being equal, a taller person with longer arms than a shorter person would swim faster. A lot of thrust in the swimming comes from arm propulsion, being able to pull your way through the water and not kicking. So if you want to be a good swimmer, you should have long, powerful arms. Michael Phelps, Olympic American swimmer, arguably the best swimmer of all time, has longer arms than he is proportionally supposed to have. He has a disproportionate wingspan of 80 inches, which is four inches longer than he is tall. That's abnormal. On top of that, he has size 14 feet that reportedly bend 15 degrees further at the ankle than most other swimmers. That flexibility also extends to his knees and elbows, which allow him to get more out of each stroke. Now, chances are some of that is nature, having arms longer than you are tall, but flexible joints could be part nature, could be part nurture. So if he's superhuman, right, is that the best we got? Because I don't know about you, but every time Michael Phelps was in the Olympics, that's what the conversation was. This guy is the perfect swimmer, but does that mean he's the best swimmer we're ever gonna have? Are we gonna have to find another genetic superhuman in order to get better at swimming? Come back tomorrow on Test 2 Plus and we'll talk all about it, about superhuman athletes. So why don't you tell us what you think? Who are some other athletes that are just genetically or maybe by nurture gifted and they're just the best athletes around? Tell us down in the comments. And also come find me on Twitter if you wanna talk more about science. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus and I'll see you tomorrow.